The Justin Robert Young Podcast is a brought to you, as always, by stickers or DIAF. If you would like jury-centric stickers, up to and including uh, our, our Jury Dare logo sticker, that's in the current pack. Our Politics, Politics, Politics sticker, that's in the current pack. Our Spearmint Nitrates, uh, I got a robot face, bro, and the exclusive jury caricature, that's in the current pack. Head on over there to stickers or DIAF.com, and uh, for five bucks, you will get seven stickers delivered to your door. Thank you guys for supporting this. Uh, we're going to keep rotating in and out uh, some of the stickers that are in the current pack, and we've got some great stuff coming up. Buy a pack now, buy a pack later. There's a reason why that uh, we, we are, it's only five bucks. Because we want to make it easy. If you see stickers that are out there, you buy those. If you, if you don't like them, then you can save it. But you can not feel bad about buying multiple packs. So check it out. Stickers or D-I-A-F dot com. And buy the contender. The game of presidential debate. 2016 packs have been packed up. The first wave is going out. You still have a chance to get yours as early as possible. If you go to thecontender.us, make sure you put the diamond club symbol for me to sign your pack. The contender. Dot us and this is the big in folks patreon.com slash j u r y we're going to be talking about this a little bit more but man did you guys go above and beyond right now at 430 patrons we are looking at 794 dollars per podcast uh, uh this is crazy it, it, it is it is a crazy uh, uh, situation that we are in right now. We will talk more and more about it. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who has either upped their pledge or has uh, just put something in. You have no idea how much this means to me. If you would like to join the team, please go ahead and do it. Patreon.com slash J-U-R-Y. But enough of us talking about doing the show. What do you say we go ahead and do the show? <laughs> To the Dog and Pony Show. This is the Justin Robert Young Podcast. My name is Justin Robert Young, and it's a gosh darn good thing that it is, because otherwise this would be a really weirdly named podcast. Uh, oh. Like, I, I, I don't know how, you know, we are, uh, we're, we're, we're supposed to even start the show without just going into what, uh, what we kind of let off with, Right? Like, how do we start the show without getting into the fact that we not only went over 700, we're now near 800. Uh, I, I'm going to put a pin in it. Because otherwise, it'll, it'll be the entire show. It'll be the entire show if, 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 if I don't get this other story out there. And I really want to. And it's a really funny story. So, last Saturday... And I know there's a lot of people that don't uh, uh, follow every element of my social media or every podcast that I do. So Saturday, Ashley and I go out. We have kind of a lazy Saturday. Next thing you know, uh, Brian Brushwood tweets out that HTC has stopped selling Vibes. 
The HTC Vive, the virtual reality machine to end all virtual reality machines. HTC has put a clamp on selling them. What? Ashley and I, meanwhile, have been talking for the last couple of weeks about buying an HTC Vive. After all, we have not only one, but two high-end gaming PCs. We got one for streaming. We got one for gaming. We run the diagnostic. It indeed is at pitch-perfect health to run these games. Oh, my God. It's looking really good for us. But then that thunderbolt of panic. Oh, no. Oh, no. HEC stopped selling them. We could be at the back end of a bread line here, folks. We could be waiting for our vibes for months. All of our cool friends could be playing vibes, and we, with all of this ability to do it, would be left out in the cold. And when I say that there was a legitimate five-alarm first-world problem, I do mean it. Now, again, listen, I understand that every once in a while, whenever we get into these types of conversations, it is a definite hashtag WPR situation as we are getting lit up in the chat room for. And at this point, I very defensively remind everybody that, you know, this is kind of the gig, right? Like, this is what we do. We, 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 we do these these events we do these live streams it is part of what we are doing so that is my self-reflexive uh, defensive nature popping out i will now put that back in the toy chest that uh, lies at the back end of my brain and resume this story because once i click on the link that brian tweeted that htc has stopped selling these vibes the first line in the story is by the way, false alarm, HTC is still selling these vibes. Now, that in and of itself solves the problem. Oh, wow. I guess the thing that we were worried about, we don't have to be worried about. Shoo. Except we're still running on this adrenaline. We're still running on this adrenaline. We're like, oh, my God, but wait. But, the, but they accidentally, they did shut it down once. What if they shut it down again? We've already been talking. We're already, uh, you know, pretty sure that we're going to get one. Let's just go ahead and pull the trigger. Pull the trigger. Pull the trigger. And she's like, okay, yes. Yeah. So she runs over and we run the diagnostic again just to make double sure that we can run it on our computer. She goes, she types in, buys the Vive. Purchased. Nailed it. All right. Awesome. We get the notice. It's going to get here in June. Fine, it can get here in June. That's all right. So meanwhile, my friend, your friend, the world's friend, Colleen. If you're unfamiliar with Colleen, she is a brilliant, brilliant mind. She is somebody that has worked at uh, some of the best tech companies in Silicon Valley, Google, Facebook among them. Among them. Uh, she has a brilliant understanding of live video compression and she is, when she was at Twit, is the reason why Brian and I were ever on Twit. She is a dear friend. So she puts up on Facebook, Sunday night, LOL, turns out I accidentally bought two Vives. Hmm. I will sell one of them. Hmm. So immediately, there's a bunch of people that are there in the in in, in her Facebook feed, uh, in her in her comment section. That's like, I'll buy it, I'll buy it, I'll buy it, I'll buy it, I'll buy it. Oh. So I put my name in that hat, and uh, you know I thought that was going to be that because there were other people before that were like before me in the comment thread. That's like, yeah, I'll buy it. So I'm like, oh, okay, it'll probably just go to somebody else. And besides, we got one on the way. Fast forward to last Monday night. It's a lazy Monday for me, folks. I am uh, uh, just kind of chilling, getting some work done on the laptop. Ashley's streaming. And I'm, uh, you know, taking care of a bottle of rosé. Yum a dum dum. I'm about three drinks in. Ashley and I 
settle in for a nice little early evening. Mmm, it's like 10.30 at night. Just as I'm about to put my phone on the charger, I see an alert. Facebook. Colleen has mentioned you in a post. Hmm. Okay. Whenever Colleen mentions me in a post, it's a good day. Slide over. Take a look at the post. And all I see is my name gro- you know, grouped with a bunch of other names. And the only words that she has written is, really? Oh, that's weird. It's also a sideways face. Like the colon and then, you know, a, a line. Like she's just like looking at us disapprovingly. So I scroll up. Scroll up. Because this is in the middle of a comment thread. And what is the media for which people are commenting on, including herself. It's a currently running live stream. In fact, one might call it a currently running vibe stream. Because it is just her pointing a camera at an HTC Vive. And what I realize is that the name of the live stream is the first person who comes to my apartment with the uh, MSRP of this unit will go home with it. And so she was calling everybody out that was local that commented on her previous thing to say, hey, look, hey, look, it's available now. Why don't y'all put your money where your mouth is? So I look at Ashley. Ashley looks at me. And there don't even have to be no words exchanged. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. We both know what's going down. We both know that Ashley's going to have to get on my laptop right now. Clickety-clack. She's going to have to go ahead and cancel that vibe. Clickety-clack. I'm going to have to run on down, get in my car and drive right down Grand Avenue to Colleen's neighborhood. Now, it is at this point that I have a few realizations. Number one, if I get there and somebody else has gotten that vibe, I'm going to be a little salty. Because again, I was a few rosés deep. I was about to go to sleep. This was supposed to be the end of my night. And at the, at, at, at the end of it, I'm in some sort of road race. Some it's a mad, 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 mad world kind of situation trying to get my hands on an $800 piece of equipment. And also, I don't know how much Colleen's being Colleen's kidding. Because before I leave, I PayPal her the money, thinking that this is not necessarily uh, serious, that, she's, that I'm, she's just like, oh, she's going to sell it. She wants me to drive over and pick it up tonight. Let me just PayPal her the money. I'm trying to shut this thing down before I got to get into the car. So I text her, and I'm like, hey, did you get the money? She's like, yeah. I'm like, I'm on my way. She's like, you better, because this is a race. What do you mean a race? I already paid you the money. This is a race. What do you mean a race? I already paid you the cash. I'm going to come over and pick up my property. Uh, uh, uh. This is a race. You racist, which I thought was funny. You know, because if there's one way, I, I, at, at a certain point, when you've already gotten somebody up out of their regular day and, and, and you are making them... Uh, you know, a drive down to where you are, you might as well call them names, right? You might as well call them a, like, uh, a racist. Like, I thought it was a very clever play on words for her. Technically, she's the racist since she's the one creating the race. I am a racer. She is the racist. So I get there and I walk in the door and there's Colleen, her friend, and another dude. Oh, come on. 
come on. I forget the guy's name. She's like, hey, this is my buddy. His name is, we'll call him Joe. This is Joe. He lives in my building. Oh. Really? Really? I look back in that Facebook thread, and I'm like, oh, wait. She did say, hey, look, there, there is one dude. She's like, hey, you have the inside track, but to give you a handicap, you have to come down with an already mixed martini. And holy crap, did I not see in Colleen's hands a perfectly chilled martini glass. He had just gotten there. This was indeed a race. And her, her racist ass already had a winner. Now there comes a moment of truth when you realize the measure of somebody. Because I'm not going to lie to you, at this moment in time, dear jury listeners, I was a little salty. I was a little cheesed off. I would have been very upset if I had not been able to get what I had paid for. And there he was, standing in my way. You realize who you are dealing with. When Colleen makes her King Solomon judgment, her way to make everything right with everyone, she indeed gave that man the brand new Vive that she had not opened. However, she did give on her own Vive to me and Ashley. She disconnected everything. She put it all back into the original box and she sent me home with the Colleen used Vive. And, and, and now she is Viveless. She is without a Vive. I have that Vive. All hail Colleen. All hail the HTC Vive. All hail you, the jury listener. Because man, you guys have gone above and beyond this week. We get into that right after this. So let's let's go back into time a little bit. Let's um let's kind of understand where 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 we're at with um with with this. Uh when I was looking to quit my job, I had a couple ideas, I had a couple plans. I wanted to uh take jury more seriously. Because when you think about me freeing up my time, this, a platform for which I can do absolutely whatever I want, and I can make what I think to be a bit of a deeper, more personal connection, because a one mic show is a deeply personal experience. You're not listening to a fly, you're not the fly on the wall in a conversation, you're not sitting at a table with other people, it is just me talking to you. Which I can tell you from firsthand experience is not dissimilar from being one of my in meat space friends. There is a lot of my what my friends have to do. A lot of our relationship is just sitting down and letting me talk because I will not stop. I am a very talkative person, if you have not already guessed. But at that point, I had I had just started the jury Patreon a couple uh, a couple like a month prior. And at that point I had I believe two hundred dollars per episode. And Ashley, my wife, when we were contemplating me leaving and what that would look like financially, put that into the uh, put that into the spreadsheet. And I'm like, well, you know, 
it, it's two hundred now, but I do feel like I can I can definitely up that. I, that can definitely be more if I put more time into it. And she's like, okay, I, I believe you. I believe what you're saying. However, let's be safe. Let's, let's just understand what we're looking at right now. But then she's like, well, but what do you think it could be? I'm like, oh, you know, I don't know. Um, probably 500 $500 a month, or a week, rather. It's $2,000 a month. That's good. That's good money. You know. And that's just for me taking it more seriously, for me making sure that this happens no matter what, for me putting time and effort into thinking about what we're going to talk about, for me honing my craft more than I had before, for me making a connection with so many amazing people that I've come to meet from taking this more seriously. So then... Politics, politics, politics came around and, and, and the idea of what this platform would be came a little bit more clear. It was just like enhance, click, click, enhance, click, click, enhance. And we had the idea for the In Your House tour, for the idea that I, that this personal platform would not be best served by me doing a one man show uh, although we do want to do those, but, but really what could happen right now is I could just fly somewhere and we could just do three events in three nights, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, on the road with two living room shows. Very much in the spirit of uh, Mary and Cole and, and the Double Clicks and so many great indie musicians when they think of, of cool ways to expand their reach. And so I set up two goals, 700 and 1,000, thinking, you want to know what? This is going to be a, a, a put-up or shut-up situation. Either people are going to be into this idea or they won't. And either will be fine because if we're at 500, then we're at 500. But we got up to about 600. We got over 420 patrons. And so... Yesterday, or sorry, not yesterday, last week, the last episode of this show, we were up over 620. And I was like, hey, you want to know what? We're making our way. We're making our way. We got a couple new subscribers. We got a couple new uh, uh, patrons. Like, like we, are, we are cranking along. I feel like we're going to get to this by the end of the summer. Well, I was mistaken. Because... This week, we had specifically three different uh, 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 people that just upped their pledges to a ridiculous amount. Like, we are, we are now close to $800. Now, I don't know how long that's going to happen, but I do know that they'll, they'll get charged this week for what they've done and I do know that that's enough for me. Man, I'm declaring victory. I'm, I'm, I'm saying we're going on this In Your House tour. It's official. And it's going to happen within the next, I mean, certainly three months. You know, uh, uh, July is kind of a crazy time, but we might be able to fit it into July. Well, July is crazy because of the conventions. Uh, here's all I know. Here's what I know about the In Your House tour. Number one, I love you guys. And let, let it never be said that, I, that there's anything other than absolute insane love that I have for everybody who listens to this show and has become a part of this community. Uh, you know, I said this last week when it came to the, uh, the, 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 the story about the, uh, uh, the, 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 trans, uh, uh, the trans listenership to this show and the email that we got uh, uh, last week. This is our own little island of misfit toys. It, it brings me tremendous joy that we can connect to each other because the world is, is in general a very lonely place. But number two, one of the people that absolutely made this happen is Hot Beverages. I want to, uh, uh, I want to make sure that you guys understand uh, that, that Hot Beverages not only was the first person to start with her, her Olympic-style 
uh, bidding for the, the venues. Uh, she had the most elaborate one, even after we started reading them on the show. She was one of the people that, that upped her pledge to make this happen. Uh, we are going to anchor this in or around Cincinnati. We're, we're going to find out where the best uh, uh, prices are for me to fly in and get a rental car. But Cincinnati is going to be part of this. So Southern Ohio, Northern Kentucky, congratulations. Your bid has been accepted. You will be a city for the In Your House tour. So, so awesome. Get ready. That's definitely going to happen. Where we go from there, we will decide over the next few weeks. But now that we've narrowed things down to drivable from Cincinnati, now's the time for you guys to submit your other stuff. So I'm talking about Columbus. I'm talking about Indianapolis. I'm talking about Kentucky. Like, this is... I'm willing to do some driving on this, by the way. I'm willing to, to have my weekend be... Do the show, hang out that night, go to sleep in that city, wake up, make the next town. Like, I'm, I'm willing to, to put in five, six, seven hours on the road to get from one place to another. So don't be shy. Put in where you would like to go. The idea will be this. Friday, uh, I will get up at the butt crack of dawn on the West Coast, fly out Friday, do the uh, politics, politics, politics show. It'll probably be a later show than it would be normally. Saturday, we do a meetup in another city. Sunday, we do jury. Uh, and, and, and that'll be in, in, in the third city. No, it'd be fun. I'll tell you what. I don't know whether or not people want to do this, but it'd be cool if we could rove like a, like a, like a Kalasar. We just tore. Like everybody would just come out with us. Oh, man, how fun would that be? Just rove like a marauding gang. Oh, man, I'm getting excited about it. All right. So if you are around, if you have an idea of where we should go, then, then, then let me know, uh, uh, you know, because I am willing to make that drive. Uh, I am eventually going to have to get back to the city that I flew out of uh, for cost reasons. But that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, we, it just means that we got we to gotta, we gotta end in, in the right place, right? So... It's happening. It's happening. As far as I know, man, no one, no one has ever done this. No one. This is a, this is an original thing. This is a, a, a first. Like I, I am, I am, man. This community has come so far. I, I am so, 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 so pumped. I'm so excited. I, I know that that this is probably just going to be, uh, uh, you know, redundant. And I know we've been talking about this, so this isn't necessarily new news. Uh, but the one thing that I've always wanted to do with this show is show you guys my true unfettered passion. I want to open up my soul to you guys, and, and I, I, I don't know if there's any other way for me to say thank you than, than to just open up, uh, open up my heart and, and, and let you all see in it. And that's what this is right now. Uh, jury means a lot to me, the show, not me talking in the third person, but this show means... A lot to me. Politics, politics, politics means a lot to me. In a lot of ways, it is a fulfillment of uh, 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 a lot of dreams. You know, it, it's 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 proof that I, you know, that I can do something. I can do something by myself, and I can put it together, and I can make it work, and I can make it fun, and I can make it human, and I can make it connectable. You guys are the living proof that I could do that, and and I, you know, it, it is it is a tremendous feeling of, of personal accomplishment and that's a selfish emotion but uh you know i feel like you know you guys just bought me my first car and i'm i'm 15 years old and you guys have just opened up the world of possibility so thank you to everybody that uh that is that have done it thank you to the to the, the three people that have upped their pledges an insane amount to make this a reality and all I would say is that, like, I don't think that those people are going to have those those pledges up at that level forever. In fact, many have exclusively told me, like, no, it's not going to be that. But we did want to get it over 700. Uh, if you want to have the uh, if, if, if you want to. To be a part of it, 
this show, patreon.com slash J-U-R-Y. Now is the time to get in. Thank the people who have put their cash on the line right now by, by, by getting in and filling in where, where they can drop their pledges. Thank you guys uh, uh, so much. We'll have your emails right after this. By the way, if you are watching live, you are seeing on our screen uh, people who are also watching the podcast awards. Uh, that is uh, very exciting. We have uh, we are possibly nominated for a podcast award, so we will uh, we will hopefully find out live whether or not we did officially get a nomination, and then we can begin our voting drive to uh, get as many Night Attack podcasts. Uh, elected uh, to these awards as possible. But first, let's go ahead and get into our emails. Uh, of course, you can email me, justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. Uh, make sure you put jury in the subject line. As far as the In Your House stuff goes, Calvin writes, Hey, Justin, I'd love for you to come by Indianapolis, especially since I will miss you at Gen Con while I'm in Australia slash Papua New Guinea. Uh, Indy's on that list, man. Indy is on that list. Uh, in fact, you want to know, I'm going to need to just put an email in to Marion Call and just to kind of ask her about best practices for, for house shows because uh, I, think, I think the idea is that if you want to host a living room show, then it is something where you should probably be cool with people coming, strangers coming to your house, so we can have people come in uh, and, and the way I think the way that they do it is that if you're interested, well, like we'll give like a general idea of like, oh, it's by this Burger King. Right. And then if you're interested in it and you email in, then we'll give the specific thing, the specific address, like, uh, the, the, the day of the show. So if you're interested in doing it then please, hopefully you're cool with, with strangers. If you're not cool with strangers, then we can figure out something else. But uh, thank you, Calvin. Indy is definitely on the list. We got two really, really, really big, heavy emails. So let's go ahead and get into the first one first. Michael writes, I appreciate everything you do and would love it if you could lend me some quick advice. I'm a male, 23 years old, and I fought my way into a decent state job for a decent living. I've been dating this girl for the last two and a half years. She's 33 and has a daughter who's six years old. We live together, and the little girl considers me to be her father at this point. Due to our age differences and her own insecurities, we have a few, uh, we've had a few rocky moments in the relationship, some rockier than others. But things are still pretty damn great, except for one thing. One little thing. I add parenthetically, the sex has basically stopped. I don't know how to approach this because she makes me very, very happy as a partner and stimulates me on an intellectual level. But I cannot tell you the last time we had intercourse. It eats at me and makes me question things. The strength of our relationship or how she perceives me. Am I no longer attractive? Did I do something wrong? I'm a dude. I like sex and would like to have more of it. I am monogamous in relationships, but I am becoming dissatisfied. Well... By the way, Alexa just asked me, I, I don't know how long she's been listening, but Alexa uh, just, just said, I don't know how to help you with that, which is effectively what I'm going to tell Michael. I don't know how to help you with this. However, this is what I think can be special about this show. I want people to email in that are in relationships that have flagging sex drives because here's what I think me telling him what he should do when I very clearly am going to identify with him more than her since I have been a 23 year old man before uh, and I have not been a 33 year old mother of one will be of marginal use here's my advice uh 
I don't know, man. Uh, you uh, this this seems like a larger issue. Uh, it seems like there is more at play than just a surface level. I'm not attracted to you. I am attracted to you kind of thing. It probably is on some level reflective of the relationship, but not necessarily. Uh, uh, obviously, you got to uh, identify what is going on in her life, and and you will probably have. A better, uh, a better situation. Now, Knotts uh, says, have they talked about it? I'm going to go ahead and assume that it's been brought up. And I'm going to go ahead and assume that it's not an easy conversation. So it is a conversation that ultimately gets avoided in the busyness of life. But here's what I want. If there are women in this audience that can better identify with the wife in this situation, or the girlfriend in this situation, then you got to email in justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. Now, I don't want to be gender lines on this, but if, if you're a dude and you more identify with the 23-year-old, then, then let's, uh, you can always email, but like, let's, let's understand that what we want is a different perspective. I want women who identify with the lady in this situation, or men if you didn't identify with the lady. Just if you've been in situations, if I just read that and you're like, oh, wow, this seems like a thing, email in. What we want to do is, is create a community where we understand more and more of other people's situations. So I would love to get some emails on this. Gabe writes, Listening to last week's episode and the whole weed and weed etiquette thing got me thinking about my experiences as a smoker. I started smoking weed as soon as I got to college. For two out of the four years, I went to school. My roommates in the place I was living sold weed. I got to see the behind the scenes of what it's like to be a small-time drug dealer. Well, that makes it sound way more fancy than it is. Behind the scenes of a small-time drug dealer. Like it's going to be an HBO special. No, it's your buddy with a shoebox under his bed. Whatever. The most interesting aspect of living with a dealer was all the interesting people that walked into your home to buy and smoke with us. For the most part, it was homies. People referred to us by friends and girls. Wink! But every now and then, we would get a completely random stranger. Tram in the, in the, in the, in the, in the chat room says, why wouldn't it be an HBO special? Because it's boring. It's not interesting to be a small-time drug dealer. I mean, I guess if you've never seen it before. Anyway. Every now and then we get a completely random stranger. There was one time during my senior year where a neighbor who we didn't know knocked on our door on a random night and asked if he and his mother could come in and buy weed. Before I continue, let me describe what this dude and his mother looked like. The son must have been in his mid-30s, fresh out of jail, stubby buzz cut and looked like a typical cholo. His mother was probably in her 50s, short chubby, and had a few teeth missing. He said that he knew... Uh, that we sold weed because our house occasionally smelled like it and the constant ins and outs of college kids coming into our home was a dead giveaway, so there was no way of getting out of this. So my roommate asked how much he wanted to buy and he said enough for a couple of joints. He said it was for his mother's aches and pains and to help him sleep. Son then asked my roommate if he could roll the joints for him since he didn't have any rolling papers. My roommate obliged. While we were all waiting for my roommate... Uh, they passed a bowl around for us to smoke, and I got a couple beers for us to drink. This is where things get weird. After a few passes and a beer or two, the mom keeps mentioning how she felt like the MILF being surrounded by all these young guys. And how we should probably want to sleep with her. <sighs> Which was definitely not the case. She wouldn't stop saying it. It was the equivalent of hearing nails on a chalkboard. After a few mentions of her calling herself a MILF, the son said to stop calling herself that and to leave us alone. Things got even weirder from there as they started having a full-blown argument in our living room. First, it was about the MILF thing. Then some other mommy-son issues started coming out about how much the mom didn't love him enough and so on. In retrospect, smoking them out and giving them beer wasn't the best idea. It got so loud that our other roommates sleeping upstairs came down to check on what was happening, saw two strangers yelling at one another, and went back upstairs to go back to sleep. 
at some point, it looked like things were going to get physical, so we all stood up to make sure nothing happened. We didn't know how to kick these people out of our house. We've kicked other people out, but never two fully grown adults. It all came to an end when the son poured a full beer over his mom, cursed her out, saying he never wanted to see her again, and stormed out of our place. We helped the mom dry up and offered to walk her back to her place to make sure nothing happened. She said she was fine and left. The son came back the following day and apologized for blowing up in our living room and gave us a bunch of frozen P.F. Chang's food from his work. Giant bags of egg rolls, dumplings, and wontons. Being the stoners we were, we graciously accepted his food. In my experience, and I'm sure many others out there, know that there are two types of drug dealers, the one you want to hang out with and smoke with after you buy, and the ones that you pick up from and leave ASAP, or if they're delivering to you, uh, just to drop off the goods in GTFO. Unfortunately for our house, it fell into the first category, and holy smokes, did they pay for it. Wow! Now that, I'll tell you what, man, I would love an HBO documentary about that. I was a little too hasty. I was a little too hasty about whether or not that was going to be appropriate. You have proven me wrong, Gabe. If you guys have any other stories that are along the lines of this, go ahead and email us, justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. A bit of a short episode this week. Uh, we might do a special one to make up for it. Thank you guys again so much for uh, for 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 putting this together. Keep emailing. Uh, of course, you can find me, Justin R. Young, on Twitter, Instagram. I'm Snapchatting a lot these days. And join the conversation at hashtag diamondclub.reddit.com. Find this podcast on Stitcher, iTunes, or Google Play. And one more time, email justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. Put jury in the subject line. Stickers are DIAF for your stickers. Thecontender.us for your contenders. And patreon.com slash J-U-R-Y to support the show directly. Folks, if you find yourself in a cannonball run for a VR machine, if you find yourself being whisked away to lovely Southern Ohio because your patrons demand it, well, folks, I want to remind you guys that you got your old pal, Justin Robert Young, here in Oakland, wishing for you in any situation to please do Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>